Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Project 2023 in 15 minutes flat. Alright, let's get started then. So as you can see I've launched Microsoft Project, this is the Project Professional version. If you have the standard version they're very similar. Just a couple of little things you can't do like connect to Project Online and a couple of other little things. Nothing to worry about. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at creating a new project. So I'm going to come down to the file and then new. And you can see there's some pre-built templates here. If you want to get pretty specific, take a look, search for those online templates. But for the purpose of this training, I'm just going to click blank project. Alright, in here, you can see this is kind of like your Excel spreadsheet. This is where I can see everything, right? So I can just put in my tasks, duration of those tasks, start and finish dates, etc. Don't do that. The very first thing you're going to do is come to the file and you're going to click, um, in fact, you're going to come to project and you can click project information. This is the first thing we're going to do whenever we create a new project to set up the project to work the way we want it to. You can see today's date, that's the start date. You can change that any date. I'm going to say, let's get started tomorrow on the project. Okay. And I can say, the ca I can set a calendar. I can uh, set up the status date, the current date, etc. I'm going to stick with the standard calendar for now, and I'll show you how to change that very shortly. So I'm going to press OK here. So the project is now starting Monday. If I create a new task, it'll be starting on Monday. Second thing we need to do is come to the change working time. In here, this is where you set up the calendar. So if you're in America, it's going to be 8 to 5, Monday through Friday for the most part. You can actually come in here and edit the work weeks by clicking on work weeks and then details. And you can say, well, actually we work a 10 hour day or wherever, it, you know, and if you're in the Middle East, maybe your, uh, your Sunday is actually a working day, things like that, right? So you can set these up. You can say that we no longer work Fridays or we do work Fridays or the eight to five Monday through Friday. However, if you do make any changes to that, you are gonna wanna click options down here and come into the project options area and make sure that the hours per day, week and month are synchronized and the start and finish times are synchronized with your calendar if you make changes. That's because when it Microsoft Project calculates tasks, it's gonna use both of these, right? So if you put in one day for a task, it's gonna use this hours per day. Now, if your day is actually seven hours and we're putting in a task and it's the default's eight, it's gonna be sticking with the eight. So you're gonna have a mismatch. Definitely come in here. Hope it saves you some trouble there. Uh, in here, there are some other project options as well. And you can actually access this, this menu. I'm going to come back to this by clicking File Options down the bottom here. This is where we can set up the project in, in more detail. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. I don't do an awful lot in here. You can actually come in here and change the date format. I do come in here and uh, make that just that lowest denominator there just to save myself some real estate. You can change the display, you can change calendars, you can change the currency. That's an important one. You can change how schedules are set up. I just showed some of that a minute ago. I always change this new task created to be auto scheduled by default for all my projects and all for all of my new projects. You can toggle those here. I don't want to spend too much time in here. I have more videos on setting up project options. Take a look at some of those. Um, I'm going to actually just press OK at this point for the purposes of time, but that will be enough to get you going. All right, so for that, back to that change working time, we can change the weeks now. And we can also come in here and say, uh, you know, we can put in things like Memorial Day or August Bank Holiday, whatever the case may be, Christmas Day. Let's do that one. Everyone pretty much knows that one, and you can say that that's going to start on December 25th, boom, good to go. And that's going to block out December. And if you come down here, you'll be able to see December. Oh, went a bit far there. <laughs> Where am I now? Oh, there we go. Close enough, February. Let's just do it this way. Well, oh, I didn't press OK, did I? There we go. <laughs> that will do it. Now, if I come back in there and look at change working time, I can scroll down to December. And you'll see that it's now grayed out. Yeah, tricky one. That I had to press OK. But you can see it's grayed out. That is a non-working day. So add all of your exceptions. No two companies are the same in my experience. 
Now, we are done. Our project shell, I'm going to call it, is set up, the start date, the calendar, etc. Let's come in and start putting in some tasks. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to sort, I'm going to have make a cup of tea, right? I love making cups of tea. So we need to get the mug out. Right. Select your favorite mug. We need to fill the kettle. We need to uh, find tea bags. Sometimes a struggle in my house. Find some sugar. All right. And we need to um, put tea bag in the mug. Could use a pot, but that's a bit too complicated for the purposes of this project. And then I guess once all of that is done, put the water into the mug. And then take tea bag out. Ooh, it's so complicated, all right? Enjoy. Or oh, add milk, obviously. All right. So um i've kind of done this you can go into as much detail as you want within your project schedules right you could just have make cup of tea and that would have done it right but we've gone into finer levels of detail i don't recommend doing that keep it very easy to understand the more tasks you put in here the more tasks you've got to manage the more resources you're going to have to assign keep it as high level as you need for it to be understandable and manageable that is the best advice i'm going to give you on this video so that's all my tasks. I want to actually uh, come to the task ribbon. I'm going to insert what's called a summary task, All right? So I come up here and in the insert section of the task ribbon, I can click summary task and I'll now put in a new summary task and I'm going to call this one make cup of tea. Now you can see by default, it may get mug a child of the make cup of tea. I'm actually going to come in here and indent the rest of them because they're all part of that, right? There we go. And if you ever want to see that work breakdown structure, I have a whole video on this, but you can actually come into the view ribbon and I can click on, oh, sorry, Gantt chart formats and outline number. Boom. 1, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1.3, so on and so forth. So that might be helpful for you. You've also got a project summary task. So you don't need to create a task to house all your tasks. That is going to summarize the entire project based on the name of the project, when we name it. And you can also add a milestone. I'm going to call this one, actually, I can make enjoy a milestone. I think we all understand what that would mean. To make a task into a milestone, just come down, take zero days. Secondly, what I want to do is update the duration of these tasks. All right, so get the mug. That probably takes me two days, fill the kettle one day, find tea bags, ooh, five days, find some sugar a bit quicker one day. You get the idea, right? So four. And you can notice that the question mark at the end of these, it's telling me I've never updated that. I never said one day. It's just the default, which is one day. Um, you know, but put water in the mug. You never know how long that's going to take you. So you could put eight question mark, which means, you know, you've estimated it, but it's still updating on the Gantt chart. So just so you know how you use those. So seven days for the take the tea bag out and add the milk, 0.5 days, right? You can do hours, you could do minutes, right? Let's make this one hour, right? It's gonna decrease the duration significantly on the Gantt chart. Next thing we need to do is link all of our tasks together. I have a video on linking tasks in Microsoft Projects. Subscribe, click it, you find it in my uh, Microsoft Project tips and tricks videos. Take a look at that. I'm just going to come in here for the purpose of this, start at the top, drag all the way down, click on the task ribbon and link them all in series. All right, I'm, that is the finish to start. So when ta one task finishes on 120 to 123, the next one can start and so on and so forth, as you see here. Now, like I said, you can get extremely granular. You can have tasks start at the same time. You can have them go finish to start, start to start, finish to finish etc well, there's only four right but <laughs> just like you can like you're probably used to seeing in the pmi handbook so there we go i think we're good there this is looking a little bit busy here so i'm actually going to come in the gantt chart tools i'm going to turn off that outline number i can always add it back in and maybe i don't need the project summary task let's make it look a bit easier one thing i love doing in here is actually coming into the um 
format ribbon and clicking on textiles and I'm going to make my summary tasks a slightly different color so summary tasks when a task becomes a summary task i.e. we indent the task beneath it uh, background color I'm going to say light blue okay so there we go make a cup of tea it's a summary task and I also do the same thing for my milestones as well so summary tasks sorry uh, textiles and then down to milestones and maybe I can make those you know, background color you can do whatever you want I'm gonna make it light orange or something like that if you do foreground colors etc just makes it pop a little bit so when you start to get tons of these summary tasks the benefits of these is you can collapse them up like so and it's 24.63 days to make a cup of tea another little tip is you can outdent the milestones like so so that from a styling preference you can do the task and the milestone at the end when you collapse everything up the nice thing also about using these is when you're in the view ribbon you can click on outline here oops and show level one and as you have summary tasks within summary tasks it make that much easier for you all right moving on from tasks I'm going to talk about resources now so we're going to click on the resource ribbon and I'm going to uh, in fact I'm going to go to the view ribbon and I'm going to click on the resource sheet view this is the best place in my opinion where we can come and add all of our new resources I'm going to put Tom I'm going to put Mary I'm going to put Addison and Scarlett and these are work resources I can give them an hourly rate I'm going to go for 60 bucks an hour each person you can give them overtime rates you can select a calendar as I showed you earlier, you can change working time for the calendars. Those can also be assigned to the resources. As you assign a resource, its own calendar, or maybe it's a United States worker versus an Indian worker versus a British worker, that, that resources calendar will overwrite the calendar for that particular task. It's a hierarchy of calendars. It goes project, ta task, resource. So the resource will overwrite the task. The task will overwrite the project calendar. There's more about that on calendars. Take a look at my videos on those as well. This is a high level overview. So we've got some resources. You can also add like, um, you know, what we're making a cup of tea, we're gonna set tea bags. We wanna track how much we're spending on tea bags and milk, right, for example. Instead of them being work resources, which is prorated resources, we're gonna make them cost resources, which is more like a fixed cost resource. So you see the hourly break for those goes away. So those are my fixed cost resources. I can have materials as well. Let's say I'm going to say that the materials in this case would be water coming out of the kettle, right? Coming out the tap, right? And I'm going to make that a material resource. We've got to specify the material. And if you expand this one, label for that as a material, I'm going to say per square foot of water, right? I'm just being, you can get the idea. You can figure it out for yourself. So now we go back to the Gantt chart. Now we've got our project fully ready to be resourced. So get the mug. Who's going to work on that? I can come in here, actually, my favorite way of doing this. And I have a video on resource management and the Microsoft project. You can really get into granular details. But I'm just going to click on Assign Resources here. I love this dialog. Like you can move it around. You can click behind it, and it still shows up. Very rare that you get that in Windows. All right, but you can come in in the background and select these uh, five tasks and I'm going to assign Mary and holding down the shift key Tom oops maybe I'll do the control key I just want Tom and I want Addison and start that again Addison Mary and Tom holding down the control key there and then click assign now I've assigned multiple resources to multiple tasks in one shot make that really easy put the water in the mug maybe put Scarlet on that one uh, make uh, take the tea bag out my uh, Tom can do that one as well and add the milk will probably be Addison. She likes adding the milk. You get the idea. Enjoy. You should never assign resources to a milestone because there's no work to do. It's just a moment in time. You should also not assign resources to summary tasks because technically they're then assigned to every single task. For example, if I assign Addison, boom, everybody's over allocated. Uh, Addison will be over allocated on every other task that she's working on because by default, she's assigned full time to that task for the duration of that task. If I assign her to the summary task, she's then assigned to all of the tasks. All right, the next thing I wanna do is manage my project